Hey, what's up? This is Nick with Rider Magazine, and today we're out here talking about the new to the U.S. market, the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. So this is Royal Enfield's latest cruiser edition to the North American market and available in other countries as well. And it's the first time that uh, Royal Enfield has delivered a cruiser to the country. And, you know, if you think about Royal Enfield as a company and you're familiar with the brand and its heritage, the Meteor moniker is something that actually dates back to the 50s for the brand. It was a very popular bike back then, then eventually phased out, but they're returning now with this brand new Meteor 350, which as, as you guys might have guessed, is powered by a 350cc single cylinder engine. So we are going to get in this first ride review and I hope you guys stick around. Of course, the first thing that I want to talk about today is the power plant within this nice little entry level cruiser. So it is a 349cc, just to be precise, single cylinder air cooled engine with a five speed transmission. We actually put it on the dyno at Jet Tuning in Camarillo, California, and it made a respectable but very modest. Uh, 18 horsepower and about 18 foot-pounds of torque or 17 foot-pounds of torque, something like that if I remember correctly. But realistically, you're dealing with entry-level power. This is the type of power that a new rider is going to be able to get on, handle, learn the basics of motorcycling, you know, between the very light clutch pull, very manageable throttle, and they're going to be able to just do some commuting, a little bit of, you know, long-distance riding. Um, you know, top speed on this thing that I experienced so far was 75 miles an hour, and that's that's when it uh, kind of tapers off and holds out. Realistically, you know, it has some, you know, nice little bit of low end in it. It's got some mid range, so you can get out, get in into the city and just kind of dart around as as needed. And overall, it's just a very user friendly motor for a rider that's just getting into motorcycling. You know, that said, if you're a more intermediate rider or something like that. You're still going to be able to have some fun on it, but realistically, where this bike sits in the overall spectrum of motorcycling, it's going to be comparable to, say, your Honda Rebel 300, your Yamaha V Star 250, and bikes that are, well, you know, they are entry level motorcycles, they are crucial to building motorcycling up and getting new riders in the saddle. So they have the most important job. Now, other aspects of the engine, of course. It has a five-speed gearbox. Shifting, very easy, very smooth. Uh, the only kind of hiccup that I would experience is that getting into first gear can be just a hair notchy, but that's not something that I'd really worry about. And you know, you have a relatively light clutch pull. Uh, it's not excessively light. I wouldn't say it's one finger, but two finger, nice and easy. And then you also have a little heel toe shifter, which is uh, reminiscent or, or trying to kind of throw at, at uh, the whole cruiser idea of this bike. Now, personally speaking, I'm not a big fan of heel toe shifters, but that's just my personal take. Other people might like them, but I, I do think it's kind of a cool little feature in the sense that, you know, Royal Enfield is kind of hamming up the cruiser vibe with this. Now, one of the other things that's really important, especially for newer riders, is the fact that it's a very small, manageable motorcycle. Again, when we talk about proportions, we're talking about a bike that's about the same physical size as a Rebel 300, Yamaha VSR 250, et cetera, et cetera. So going with that theme, you have a very low 30.1 inch seat height, narrow chassis. So that means people with you know, smaller inseam lengths are still going to be able to get their boots on the ground and be very, very confident when at stoplights starting out, etc., etc. Now, with our bike in particular, there are three levels of the Meteor 350, and you have the Fireball, the Stellar, and the Supernova. What you have before you is the Supernova Brown, which means it comes with this handy dandy little windscreen, provides some nice wind protection, it has this passenger backrest, which to be honest, the whole seat and passenger back backrest looks really good. Stitching is nice, leather is cool. Then you also get the Tripper, which is a little, you know, turn-by-turn -turn navigation device that you can pair with your phone and get some navigation on. That pretty much doesn't happen on any of these entry-level bikes as far as having technological offerings like that. So that's pretty cool. But 
Going back to the riding position, you know, again, 30.1 inch seat height, narrow, you know, bike, get your boots on the ground, nice and easy, everyone's happy. And then you have mid controls, so you're not forward controls, you can still, you know, drive some weight through your legs and keep pressure off your lower back. Then you have these nice uh, back swept handlebars. Everything is just very easy and accessible and again, user friendly. That's the theme for this motorcycle because new riders need to have everything delivered to them in a very friendly package. Makes sense. Now, going into that friendly package and user friendliness that I've spoken about, tying into that is the handling, which you know you sit in a very upright position, commanding position, and you can just use the handlebars to just push the bike around and it responds to everything you do very nicely. You know, when it comes to getting your license and passing that DMV course or DMV test for the first time, bikes like this are your bread and butter. This thing will ace those tests all the time. And it's because it's a very compliant, easygoing motorcycle. Now, suspension and chassis, it's kept to the bare minimum, again, as you'd expect for something like this but it does an adequate job. You have a 41 mil uh, fork up front, non-adjustable, and then you have old school style dual shocks in the rear with preload adjustment. Now, they're pretty basic, and that's you know not a knock to it. This is just what you can expect at $4,599. But I think their damping rates and spring rates for someone of my size are more than adequate. You're not gonna be taking a lot of hits like you would on, especially if you think back to the Rebel 250 or even the, the Rebel 300 with kind of limited rear travel. And you can feel a lot of those potholes through the seat. That's not the case here. And I'm very happy to say that because I think that's very important, again, for new riders. So again, handling wise, you know, at higher speeds, you can upset the chassis a little bit. It can get a tad bouncy if you're going over some really beaten roads and you're at high speed, but let's reel it in. Think about the actual consumer of this bike and the type of person that's gonna be riding it, and they're probably not gonna be doing that. I think overall, the suspension here has done a very good job for its intended use, which is casual riding, cruising around, getting to and from work or school, bopping around the city, and then, you know, maybe going out for a nice little weekend adventure in the canyons or something longer. I think that's all going to work pretty nicely. Other things I want to touch on is the fact that you get a 300 millimeter disc up front with a bi -bree, so that is a, a sub-brand of Brembo brakes, two piston caliper in the front. And I'm actually happy to report that there is some nice feel here. It has a very soft initial bite, you know, just kind of soft, uh, just feel overall in the brakes, but it's not vague or squishy. I, I, I would actually say that I'm pretty happy with the brakes in that regard. Again, with a lot of bikes in this price point, if you think about lower displacement, dual sports or uh, entry level cruisers, a lot of the times you get these kind of wooden brake feel and that's not what you get here. Very cool stuff, right? Now in the rear, single, pill, uh, single piston caliper, you know, uh, brake feel again, good and the position of it is quite good as well so between that i think you have you know a, a competent brake braking system that new riders will be able to again learn the basics of so you're going to have good shifting good braking you know very friendly user friendly experience for someone that's just learning the ropes which is kind of what this bike is all about now tying back into that and the handling and whatnot again wheelbase is a little bit above 55 inches if i remember correctly that's right in the ballpark of your rebel 300 v star 250 and so it is a very small motorcycle you know i think if you're pushing that six foot range you're a taller guy or gal um, you might feel a tad cramped on it that's going to be a case by case scenario but anyone that's at my height you know 510 and below maybe just just on the cusp of six foot you're you're gonna be in good shape okay and uh you know it's all good there but overall for four thousand five hundred ninety nine dollars i think royal enfield is going to be delivering something that's quite compelling to a new rider um, power wise again modest modest figures and they're the type of figures that really play into the need 
versus want. We all want high powered, super cool, you know, cruisers and sport bikes. But the reality is we need something like this to learn on just to get our grounding before we might graduate to something. And if you want to stay in the Royal Enfield family, like the Continental 650 or, you know, the Interceptor uh, 650 twin engine uh, powered bikes. But bikes like this get you started. And that's what's important. And that's why this thing is here. Now, the other thing that I kind of want to wrap up here on and just kind of touch on some of the bits again is the fit and finish. If we think about when those aforementioned 650 twin models were released, that was the same time that Royal Enfield really upped their ante in terms of manufacturing. They went to ISO 9001 manufacturing standards and it just raised the bar for everything. So fit and finish wise, you get some really good paint finishes. This brown, supernova brown has a sparkly finish. You get kind of a tri-color effect here with the silver uh, streamlining and then the black down here. Badging is all good. Overall fit and finish is very nice when we're talking about the touch points. I would like to see um, some of the wiring up here tucked in a little bit nicer, things like that. But paint, you know, the finishes on the saddle, all those things are nice. And you even get an LED tail light. However, you're still using a standard halogen bulb up front. Again, I'd like to see a halogen or an LED up front because they're just more effective for nighttime riding. And again, this is the Supernova Brown in the Supernova line, which is the top tier for this entry level cruiser. So you get windscreen, little backrest, and the tripper navigation system. Um, you know, at again, $45.99, I think Royal Enfield is doing a pretty decent job here. It's a very competent little bike, very fun bike. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. Last thing I want to remind you guys to go ahead and uh, you know be safe out there. So take care.